Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo, one more time. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, our kids can go ahead and be dismissed to the back. Oh, while you're standing, why don't you say this after me? This is what mom was talking about. I tell you, I'm going to recondition you. It might take me a while, but I'm going to condition you to be, to be uh, well, <laughs> how do I say this nice and still be encouraging? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, yeah, that's a good way to say it. I'm going to, I'm going to one, one day, you're going to learn how to be vertical more than you are horizontal. See, scripture says, say that walk and then you sit and then you lay down, you know, the seed the scornful and, and the way in the paths of the. But yeah, I'm messing that one up big time. Uh, but anyway, but the way, to, the way to lose is to stop. You know what? It kind of parallels what we'll talk about tonight. So anyway, I just don't like to stop. So I'm not trying to make you stand. I'm, I guess I'm succeeding. Uh, you are standing. So this is what mom was talking about. Say this after me, please. I declare, I declare that the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, don't just be a parrot, but rather recognize what you're saying if you choose to believe it it will be so yes. to you all right we'll start over i declare, I declare that, the that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of jesus christ, of jesus christ will, come me, will come into me that the doors of my spirit, doors of my spirit and, of my soul, and of my soul are being opened right now I will understand more tomorrow. I will understand more tomorrow. This is the part she was talking about. I will understand more tomorrow. By the Spirit. Than what I heard in English today. I will know more by the Holy Ghost. Than what my ears have heard today. Now I declare. That the fowl of the air. We'll get no seed out of this house tonight. But every word sent forth shall accomplish that for which it was sent. Now let me ask you a question. Do you believe you are good ground? Yes. Well, that means if seed is planted in you, then it will bear much fruit. Hallelujah. So I expect in due season, much fruit will be evident in your life. Do you believe it? Yes. Well, if you believe it, then you receive it. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Now, go ahead and be, be seated. Bless the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. If the Spirit of God doesn't move within our midst, then we had no movement. We were dead. I don't ever want to go to a church service anywhere, especially my own, where it's dead, Amen. where there is no movement. Amen. Do you know how you can never, or let me say it differently, do you know how you can always go somewhere and have the movement of the Holy Ghost? You learn how to stir the waters. You take them with you. You learn how to draw from the wells of life that are within you. But if you don't draw, you don't get. Just like if you don't press the valve on the water fountain, the water doesn't come out. Was the water there? Yes. It was cold and refreshing. But if you didn't press that bar on there or that knob or that valve or whatever it is, you didn't get anything. You didn't get anything. And if you didn't put it inside of you, then it benefited you nothing. Yeah. So we got to learn how to constantly, uh, no matter what circumstances we're in, no matter what environment we're in, no matter who's around us, no matter what obstacles we have, that we learn how to draw from the rivers or from the wells of living water that are supposed to be springing up on the inside of us. Now, I said supposed to be, and that's really quite an error, because Jesus said they are. 
So the only reason that the well is not springing up inside of, of, of you is because you've stopped it. You say, well, I didn't stop it. Well, then good. Good. That means it's springing up on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Okay, that has nothing to do with what I intended to say today. But I want to tell you, uh, you don't ever, you don't ever have to be without the refreshing waters of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Never, ever, 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 feel sorry for yourself. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Never, ever, 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 ever think that you don't have the Holy Spirit with you. Three things you should never, ever, 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 ever do. Never, ever, ever. That's good water. I don't want to drink it in front of you and make you thirsty. All right. Do you have your Bibles this evening? Um, last week, how many of you were here last week? We had a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. It was so refreshing. So if you were here last week, let's just pick up where we left off. Ready? Go. <laughs> Some of you remember. Yeah. <laughs> Le ramanda se vekiti ele de visu, man breba fa panda veki saravanda kushuku le siketi alala. Look to your neighbor. Look to your neighbor. That was the key. Look, beholding the glory of God between each other, face to face. Masukum rebetisa veti alala mosuko se prefediati asakada davandia. Mo ramana vandia kasupo remeni de visa teli ele la vondio kushetara bada davandia. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So you say, well, what are you doing? Well, this is one way to stir up and to draw up those waters that are bubbling, that are bubbling and springing up. That's one way. It's not the only way, but it's one of the best ways. That's one way to do it. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you don't have to be at war. Now, when I was a kid, there was a phrase that was rolling around called warring tongues. Yes. It, and it sounds real good. The only problem is I've not found it in Scripture yet. I haven't found it in Scripture. I haven't found it. Now, I've found war and I have found tongues. But I've not found warring tongues not mentioned in words or in action or principle anywhere in the Bible. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody, if you, if you have that information, you can, you can uh, educate me. But I've not found anywhere where, where tongues was used in, in that sense, uh, in, in the sense that you go to, go to battle in tongues. Yet, I know that when I pray in the Holy Ghost, that I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain I'm chopping off a few demon heads. Well, and, and I'm quite certain that, yeah, that, that I'm, I'm killing some flesh. So maybe in that sense we could think of, you know, warring tongues. But here's, here's the problem. Um, we, have a, we would have a tendency to think that we're the ones that battle. And if we have a tendency to think that we're the ones that battle, then we lost already. See, I'm not the one at, at battle. I'm not the one in war. I'm not the one fighting. I'm the one victoring. Yes. I got my victuals together. In other words, I got my banners and my party streamers and the cake is made and the candles are lit. See, he's, he's, he, he, he has made me more than a conqueror. He has not made me a conqueror. He's made me more than a conqueror. He, Jesus, the Lord, strong and mighty in battle. See, John is weak and fails in battle. But Jesus is the victor. He is strong and mighty in battle. He's Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. The captain of hosts is what one translation says. He's the captain of all the military ranks of heaven. Well... I've never heard of heaven losing a battle yet. Actually, I told you a few weeks ago we've got to learn when to drop the word yet. I've never heard of heaven losing a battle. Not from the beginning all the way to the end. I've never heard of heaven losing a battle. Well, guess whose kingdom you're in? You're in the kingdom of heaven. 
That means your kingdom has never lost a battle. Your kingdom has never lost a battle. See, I think that, that must be what happens. We forget whose kingdom we're in. And we start feeling defeated and we start feeling like a loser. But I'm of the kingdom of heaven. I'm not a loser. Take your right hand and put it on your forehead. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. That's a good place for that's me. Y'all are quiet tonight. I'm going to stir you up. It won't kill me. It'll put us all to life. When we forget whose kingdom we're in, we'll forget what victory we have. I'm going to say that again because that was good. By the way, none of this is in my notes. I didn't plan all this. We're just following the Holy Ghost. If you forget, if I forget what kingdom I'm a part of, I'll forget what kind of victory I'm a part of. I'll forget that he's won every battle ahead of time for me. So the only fight, if I'm going to fight something, the only fight that I have is the fight to continue to believe that I've won. That's the fight of faith. Not, the fight of faith is not believe God will. That's the fight of hope. The fight of faith is to believe that God has. Now, if you believe that God has, the next thing you have to believe is that he has given that victory. But I'll ask the same question I've asked many times over the last several weeks. Is a gift given a gift received? No, it is not the same thing. Just because something was given doesn't mean that you have received it. And just because you have taken something into your possession doesn't mean that you are living with it, embraced it, and put it to action in your life. So the fight of faith is more than just believing that he has done, but rather you have to also believe that he has given and if you can believe that he's given, you have to believe that you receive. Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. For verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe, I'm sorry, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that they are given to you, and you shall have them. Hello, anybody in the room? Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. It's not a matter of what he's given. It's a matter of what you've received. Glory be to God. I have the victory by Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have the victory by Christ Jesus, my Lord. Who gave you that victory? Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, you know what that means? Since no name or no power or nothing can stand against the name of Jesus, that means nothing can take your victory away. Because he gave it to you. So if somebody is going to take something that Jesus gave to you, they're going to have to go through him first. You have no right to have that. Well, you better talk to the one who gave it to me. I believe that I received. That's faith right there. That's the faith verse. That's what all the word of faith churches uh, perceive as one of the greatest faith verses. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Receive. You got to believe that you receive. I have the victory by Christ Jesus, my Lord. So if something's going to come against my victory, they've got to come against my Lord, who is strong, mighty, in battle, the captain of the armies of heaven that have never lost a victory and they never will. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm excited about it. Glory be to God. Some of you got to remind yourself of it tomorrow morning when you wake up. I believe I'll know more by the Spirit. Yes, I believe you will. You'll know more by the Spirit tomorrow than what you heard with your ears today. Hallelujah. Tomorrow it'll be bigger in you. Tomorrow it'll be bigger in you. By the end of the day, you'll be shouting glory. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to see yourself with the victory. Not see yourself in the battle. You've got to see yourself with the victory. Glory be to God. You don't win battles by seeing yourself win battles. You win battles by seeing yourself having won battles. Finished. 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 And how do you win a battle? I'll tell you how. You hide behind Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. All right, I asked you if you had your Bibles. Do you? Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Oh, wow. Hey, thank you, Lord. This fits, this fits real good here. Okay, so now everything that was just said, we're going we're gonna to see some scripture about it all, I guess. I, 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 praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. Hallelujah. Are you there? Deuteronomy chapter 20. If you're there, say I'm there. All right, we'll, ra- we'll wait on the, on the rest, get, get a little more time. Hallelujah. I've got all eternity, so we're not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry. If we move too fast, we miss, we miss the good stuff. We miss the good stuff. I wonder how many people left the wedding at Cana when they first ran out of wine. Because they weren't patient enough to hang around and wait. But rather, it was at the end of the party where the good stuff came out. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what's pretty cool? Man thought they knew what good stuff was. The wine in heaven must be incredible. Because when Jesus made the wine, it was the best they've ever had. Yes. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 20, are you there? Yes. All right. Uh, we'll start right in the beginning. I was going to start in verse 4, but we'll start right in the beginning. When you go out to battle against your enemy... And you see horses and chariots and more people than what you have. Don't be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you. Let's make that personal. For the Lord thy God is with, or for the Lord my God is with me. Will you say it please? For the Lord my God is with me. Say it again. For the Lord my God is with me. Verse 2. And it shall be when you come near to the battleground that your priests, they'll go out and speak to the people. And they'll say to them, listen. Now, in this case, Israel, because this is a direct command from the Lord through the prophet as to how the armies of Israel would handle this particular battle. So when you get out close to the battlefield, the, the priest will approach the people and he'll say, listen up. People of Israel, you came here today to fight against your enemies. You see that there? Approach this day unto battle against your enemies. You approach this day, that means you came here today to fight against your enemies. But don't let your hearts fail. Don't be afraid. Don't tremble. Don't shake in your boots. Don't be terrified because of them. Don't be afraid because of this army that you see against you that is bigger than you. Verse 4. For the Lord your God is the one that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Look at those last three words, to save you. We've been talking about salvation for several weeks. And this is not necessarily a continuation of what we were doing. Uh, this is something that the Lord uh, had, had given to me that, that I felt like our church, our body, that means you and me, that we needed coming into this new year. We have got to set ourselves in a position to where no, we're no longer fighting, struggling against Warring against, battling. When you fight, when you war, there are always casualties. There's always losses. In the New Testament, they said no man goes to war unless he count the cost. There's always a cost to war. If you didn't lose any, any uh, blood, you at least lost money. 
If you didn't lose money, you at least lost manpower or blood or people, which is the most uh, precious commodity on the face of the earth. Uh, and so, therefore, it'd be worse than losing money. I'd rather lose money any day of my life than to lose my wife. Hello, are y'all with me tonight? Yes. It's, it's okay if you respond with, I agree, amen, true, uh, you, know, you know, shut up, you idiot. I mean, something, you know, something. Um, anything's better than nothing. Uh, anyway, I would rather lose money any day than to lose my children. If you don't think so, talk to some of your fellow brethren, some of your fellow sistren that have lost children. They would pay anything to have those days back. You wouldn't trade... Maybe some of you would, I don't know. Uh, you wouldn't trade your right arm for any amount of money. See, it got quieter on that one, so some of you are thinking about, well, how much money are we talking about? You know. How about my left? Yeah. <laughs> then I can still do most things because I'm right-handed. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you. To fight for you against your enemies. Not to fight. Look, 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 look. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you. Notice it doesn't say for the Lord for it doesn't say for the Lord your God is he that goes to fight with you. He goes with you, but he goes to fight. To fight. You go to win. Yes. Because if you weren't also out there on the battlefield, then you wouldn't know the cost. But the last three verses, or the last three words of this verse says, but the Lord is there. To save you. Amen. To save you. To save you what? To save you all of the cost. Yes. He paid the cost. Yes. He took all the risk. Yes. He did all the bloodshed. Yes. He took all the beating. Yes. He swung all the swords. He did all the fighting. He did all the winning. You get all the proceeds. You get all of the, the victory. But he's the one who earned it. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you on your behalf. John, I got in trouble the other day and I... And uh, uh, I, I, I had to hire an attorney. Well, why did you do that? Well, because I don't know how to maneuver on that battlefield. So I hired someone to speak on my behalf and to go to battle for me. Because that attorney knows what to say. He knows the rules of engagement. He knows the law. He knows the loopholes, and he knows the judge. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We could stop there. We really could. I'm going to give you more. I think you want more. You remember the story of Joshua? And I know you know Joshua 1.8. Somebody spit out Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For then thou shalt... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I forgot something there. That thou mayest observe to do. According to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That, that scripture has been preached many a times over. I uh, just took you there because you're familiar with it. But the verse before, and the verse before that, is giving instruction to Joshua. Before he could ever fulfill Joshua 1.8, 
he had to face his fear of failing, Joshua 1.8. And God is telling him, be strong and be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't worry that the obstacle ahead of you is bigger than who you are. So if you couple what we talked about a moment ago and you talk about this, so even when we're talking about in uh, observing to do all that is written therein, don't worry. The obstacles of the law are bigger than you, but they're not bigger than Jesus. And Jesus goes with you. As a matter of fact, he goes before you to fight for you. He went before you and fulfilled all that is written therein. He observed to do it all. So now I can make my way prosperous. And now... I can have good success. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Why? Well, I'm, I'm, I jumped back over to verse 8. But why? Because I'm in him. All right, I don't want to preach Sundays. Hallelujah. Be strong and of good courage. Verse 7, it says it again. Only, it adds the word only. Only. In other words, there's no other option to do anything else. Have you seen the commercial? I think it's a deodorant commercial. I'm not real sure. I see it pop up on the TV in the gym, but there's no words, so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it says, one is not a choice. Right? One is not a choice. There's only one. There's only one option. That's not a choice. By default, you have one. That's the only thing you can do. So he is telling Joshua here, only be. He's saying, Eliminate the other options. Only be strong. Only be very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all this in the law. Verse 9. We already read verse 8. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with thee wherever you go. Hallelujah. Say that. The Lord my God is with me. Say it again. The Lord my God is with me. Look up to the Lord and say it like you believe it. The Lord my God is with me. He's with you. He's with you. Say it again. The Lord my God is with me. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. The Lord my God is with me. Hallelujah. 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 First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles. First, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in the Old Testament. It's first Corinthians that I want you to go to. First Corinthians chapter 16. Now there's very little I will tell you tonight that most of you haven't heard already. But you will know more tomorrow by the Spirit than what you heard with your ears. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. If you're there, say I'm there. there. Last chapter of 1 Corinthians. Watch ye. You know what that means? Keep an eye out. Be alert. Has anybody ever told you you better watch your back? Yes. Well, effect, effectively, that's what this means. You better sleep with one eye open. Be alert. Stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men, be strong. That's King James. So if we were to read it in modern day English, it would say, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Stand with agility in believing. Stand fast in the faith. Um, and the next verse, quit ye which doesn't mean stop being men. Quit you, the next phrase, uh, quit you like men. It doesn't mean stop being a man. It's, it really, literally, it means act like a man. But I, I, I want to give a little guidance in your understanding that it's not talking fleshly. 
It's, it's using a parallel, an analogy of how the world views a man. You stand up in the face of obstacles, right? You stand up. A man is expected to, to, to be the, a defender, to be tough, to not run from opposition. But we know that a godly man doesn't stand in the flesh. He stands in Christ. So watch ye, be alert, stand fast, get up on your feet, be agile. Do you remember Gideon's army? Gideon's army, he had a bunch and then he had a little. And one of the filtering processes was to have the men go down to the brook and to drink. You remember that? So he brings the armies down to the brook to drink. And some of them drop their rep weaponry and threw their faces down in the ground. I mean, because these, these guys were thirsty, obviously. They threw their faces down in the water and just... But others stayed alert. They were on guard. Stand fast. On guard! They stood fast, but yet they were commanded to drink. So they were alert and ready even while resting. They were told to go, go rest for a moment, get a drink from the brook. But they were alert and ready even while resting... And those are who God considered to be the strong men and said they can stay in the army. Everybody else, send them packing. So the man who can stay, or the woman, who can stay alert and ready while resting is who God considers to be the strong man. What are they strong in? They are strong in believing the Lord. They are strong in believing. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, be alert. Stand fast. Well, we'll use that new term, on guard. In the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in believing. In what you believe. Quit you like men. Be strong. Okay, uh, let's turn a couple chapters over. Ephesians chapter 6. Last chapter in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, it's right before Philippians. Literally the chapter before Philippians. If you're there, say I'm there. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 10. Oh. Yeah, we'll start there. Okay, again, I know you know these verses, you're familiar with them. Don't dismiss truth because of familiarity. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Let's stop there for a second. Well, let me, let me not forget in the Lord. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. There we go, we'll finish the verse and now we'll expound. Paul is speaking to the, Ephesians, the church at, at Ephesus. And it's the end of his letter, and he's bringing it to conclusion. But when he says, finally, here, he is not talking about, I'm closing. That's not what he means by finally. He means the very... Are you taking a picture of me? Let me smile. <laughs> he said, the very last thing, not just in what he's writing, but in what you do. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. See, He gives them all sorts of instruction. And when He's bringing it to a, to a close, He's reminding them, that your strength comes from the Lord. Your power comes from the Lord. The Lord, strong and mighty in battle. Your power comes from Him, not from you. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Saul. Put on the whole armor of God. Do you remember David on the battlefield against Goliath? And Saul sees David as frail, weak, small, having no ability within himself. And he says, I don't dare send this little boy to fight for Israel on his own. Give him my armor. And how many of you would believe the king had the best armor of anybody? 
The king had the best armor. Saul was saying, give him the armor of man that is the best. But God said, no, the armor of God is better. See, David recognized that. And he said, this stuff don't fit me. We have got to learn how to say the armor of man don't fit me. Doesn't. Sorry, mama. The army of man doesn't fit you. Why? Because you are not a normal man. You are a God man. You are not a normal woman. You are a God woman. You are not an earthly being. Therefore, you don't need earthly armor. You are a spiritual being. Therefore, we put on the armor of God. Verse 11. We put on the armor of God. Why? So that then we can stand against the devil. The armor of man is no match against the devil. But the, army, uh, the armor of God cannot be pierced by a single one of the devil's weapons. The armor of man does not fit me. But the armor of God fits quite well. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're going to move a little fast through this. We're not studying these. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And if you want to detail all that out, get Brother Hagin's book on it. Wherefore, take ye unto you the whole armor of God. Notice the instruction. Take on the whole armor of God. Don't miss anything. Don't miss anything. You don't want any part of you unprotected. You don't want any part of you weak. You don't want any part of you malnourished or whatever. Malnourished. You don't want any part of you thirsty. You don't want any part of you dry. Learn how to stir up the waters of the Holy Ghost. How to be saturated in the Spirit of God. How to be full of His presence. Not just be fully in His presence, but how to be full of His presence. Learn how to have the glory of God glowing, camping around about you and in you all the time. All the time. That's how you put on the full armor of God. That's how you put on the full armor of God. If you notice, he doesn't give any instruction on how to put on the full armor of God. But if it's God's armor... He has to give it to you. But you have to receive it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your learns gored about with truth and, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all. How many? All. All. All the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching. Be alert. One eye open. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right. Uh, and then let's keep moving on in the New Testament here. First Peter. We just went right in order from old to new tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Are you winning your battles? Yes. Nope. I've already won. I hope you're winning, but I hope you get to the point. I got you on that one, didn't I? Ah. But I know your heart. That's good. Be alert. Listen with one ear open. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, 1 Peter 5. If you're there, say I'm there. I'm there. Verse 7. Oh, no, no. Well, yeah, I don't have time. Verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. See, it's paralleled to casting all your battles upon him, for he fights for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be alert. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Stay on your feet. Why? Because there's an adversary. He's the devil. He's roaming about like a roaring, roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. 
whom resist? Let me ask you a question. If you were walking through the jungles of Africa and a roaring lion came out, what would you do? It's not a trick question. What would you do? Shoot if you had a gun. If you didn't have a gun, what would you do? You'd probably bolt. I'm out of here. Now, that's instincts that kick in kind of thing, right? I don't know if it's a good idea. You might induce run in the lion, you know, and the chase is on. I don't know. You might should stand there like you're dead. But I, I don't know. I don't know how to, how to fight against that, that kind of lion. I don't know what to do. But let me tell you what the Bible says that we do when the roaring lion, our adversary, the devil, when he roams about and he finds you, what you do? You resist him steadfast in the faith. Now, I can just picture you going through Africa and you see that hungry lion and you go, Now, in the natural, that doesn't make much sense. But according to the word of God, it works against the devil. Yes. Roar to the hand. I don't know that. <laughs> you get it? It finally it hit mama. She got it. Speak to the hand because the ears. Anyway, that's old. I'm proving my age. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are all around the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, he had suffered a little while, made you per make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. In other words, the Lord Jesus will cause you not to run, but rather to stand strong in the faith, resisting your adversary, the devil. And in Timothy, it says, resist the devil. It says, firstly, submit yourself, therefore, to God. So the first thing you do is say, God, you strengthen me. Yes. You establish me. You settle me. You make me perfect. Yes. And then you resist the devil. And he shall flee. Yes. One is not an option. One is not a choice. It's an absolute. It's a default. It's only one option. It doesn't say, and he can either flee or do something else. Resist him. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he shall. No other option. He shall flee. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. To who? To him. To him. To him. Who gets the glory? Jesus. Who gets the benefit? See, he won the battle. All the praise goes to him. He did all the work. He did all the bloodshed. He paid all the cost. He counted it ahead of time and decided it was worth it. Amen. He paid the price. He paid the price. You are the redeemed. He paid the price. You are the saved. The Lord, your God that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. That includes the devil. Yes. To save you. Didn't cost you anything. No. Didn't cost you anything. Saved you. Saved you. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. I am more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. Say that, please. I am more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. Who loved me. Still does. Who loves me. And gave himself for me. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, Glory be to God. Is that you? Yes. That's yes, it is. That's you. You are more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. He has won every battle on your behalf. He has won every battle on your behalf. Live in the victory. Live in the victory. Don't live in a battle. Don't live in a battle. Live in the victory. 
Live in the victory. He has won it. He's won it. And he's given it to you. Receive it with thanksgiving. Glory be to God. Father, I thank you that in this year 2018, we will live in the victory. We don't live in the struggle. We don't live in the fight. We don't live in the frustration. We don't live in lack. We don't live in poverty. We don't live in sickness. We don't live in disease or discomfort. We live in victory. We walk in victory. Victory is ours by Christ Jesus. And if somebody's going to try to steal it, they're going to have to beat him up for it. The victory is ours because of the Lord Jesus. In 2018, we will walk in victory. Every day of our life is a day of victory. Every day of your life is a day of victory. Every day, say that, every day of my life is a day of victory. Say it again, every day of my life is a day of victory. I am more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory be to God. If there's anybody here, they're not born again. You'd like to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus. You say, I have sin. I have guilt. I have shame. I need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. I live a defeated life. The devil walks all over me every day. And I'm tired of it. I want to live in victory. Christ Jesus paid the price for your victory. You can receive it. It's a free gift. You say, tonight's my night. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Anybody here? Just lift your hand real quick. It's so easy to come unto Jesus. His arms are wide open. If his arms were closed, it'd be hard to get in. But he's got open arms. He's been drawing you and he'll never stop drawing you. Even if you're laid up against his chest, he still draws and calls upon you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, tonight, if you're struggling with fear, with worry, you face some obstacles in this upcoming year. Maybe it's a family battle. I, maybe, I don't want to, I have some things coming to me, but I, I feel like if I, I, I'll be embarrassing if you we have a small crowd. But you have struggles that, that you, you expect to be facing in 2018. Well, I'm, I want to minister to you. I want to pray for you. The Holy Ghost will, will take the worry away from you and he'll give you wisdom. If he takes away worry and he gives you wisdom, all you do is act upon the wisdom and believe his word and it'll come out good for you. It'll come out good for you. So whatever the situations might be, uh, if, you, if you, you, just, you, you need that boost if you will that shot of victory in the arm would you come down to the front let me minister to you now dismiss everybody else but every day every day not half the days not every third day not one day a week not Sunday not Wednesday every day every day is a day of victory every day is a day of victory every day is a day of victory when you wake up in the morning tomorrow tell yourself today is a day of victory Today is the day of victory. Every battle is won by the Lord. By the Lord. Receive your victory. If you need to go, you're free to go. You're free to stay also. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, receive your victory. Receive your victory. Lord, give her wisdom and clarity on how to maneuver, where to go, what to say, and how to do it. In peace and strength the whole while through. In the name of Jesus, receive your victory. Receive your victory in the name of Jesus. Clarity. Clarity. Strategy that you would have never thought of on your own. The all-knowing one knows the way. 
He is the way. He'll show it to you. You'll walk in it. You'll be glad for it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Be free in the spirit of your mind in the name of Jesus. I rebuke all fear in the name of Jesus. Worry and doubt go in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of unbelief that says it's too late. And I declare to you that it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I've already prayed with you for your healing. You're not here for healing. <laughs> I want everything I can give. Hallelujah. According to your faith, be it unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. It's yours. It's mine, Lord. Hallelujah. Every last vision and every last dream will be fulfilled. You'll see it before you go. It won't be lost. It won't be lost. You'll see it. The number 47 comes to me. I don't know what the number 47 is, but it's tied to a fulfillment of something. If I were to stab at it, I'd, I'd be saying for 47 years you've believed for something. And so if that, if that be the case, anyway, the original word is everything will be fulfilled. Yeah. Not a single thing lacking. Not a single thing lacking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. When it's all done, then you can go home. In the meantime, stand strong. Stand strong. Stand strong. Therefore, you've got to be well. You've got to be well. You're already a strong man, but by the Holy Ghost, strength and peace be yours. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. If your words will magnify me instead of magnifying your problem, your problem will soon disappear. Your problem will soon disappear. Speak my word and not your worries. <laughs> I saw an exchange take place. I say, I just learned something when I, when I saw it. I know this to be true, but I love the picture. I love the analogy. When we speak worries, we give them root in our own life. When we speak the word, we give it root in our life. And two trees can't grow in the same place at the same time. Something has to give. Something has to go. Speak the word and the word will grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That was fun. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm standing in gap for my son Isaiah. He's 14 years old and he's being re very rebellious to the people that has adopted him. He's not wanting to do anything, cooperate or anything, just being a hard time. All right. Well, Lord, I was 14 once. Isaiah. We were all, I think everybody in this room, we were all 14 <laughs> once. <laughs> They're wanting to send to him to me. No, no, no. Angels, 
I commission you by the name of Jesus to go and surround Isaiah. Yes. Tonight will be the beginning of a change in his life. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to the dreams that he has at night and those dreams of, of loss and disconnection. I break those and I insert and replace, I place in his dreams and thought life during the night hour, dreams of purpose and fulfillment. Yes. Yes. Dreams of hope and future. Connect him, Holy Ghost, with the things that you've called him to. Yes, Father. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You going to tell me anything? Pour the, fire, the oil of God over you in the spirit. And then I light a match. That the fire of God burn out everything that doesn't belong. May you be lit up by the spirit. And you've got more responsibility than he does. Breathe on him, breath of God. Sean, forgive yourself. You won't be able to move on otherwise. Leave it here tonight. Right here. Right here. Right now. <laughs> Don't go home with it. Don't go home with it. Be a free man. Live free from this day forward. Today's your last day of bondage. Do you believe it? Sir. Sure. Look me in the eye and say, today is my last day of bondage. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Ghost, do a work. Holy Ghost, do a work. Repair. Mend. Heal. Stretch out your hands this way for those of you who are still here. Stay connected with us. Nina da Mosuku, Ritikidia, Kadavadia, Satakidia, the Davasam Rabaya. He can change your heart instantly, but he's, gonna, he's begun to change your mind. And he'll change your uh, responses. That's what I'm looking for. He'll change your responses. The way you used to respond to things will begin to change if you'll yield to him. If you'll yield to him if you'll yield to them. So yield to them. When the occasions come, and they will, yield to the Holy Ghost. Submit yourself therefore unto God. We just talked about it tonight. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. And you'll be glad about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Jared. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. 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 Keep doing what's right to do. Keep doing what's right to do. 
any crazy idea that you get, filter it through somebody else. Let, let others help you along the way here. Yeah? Yeah? You're doing good? You're doing good? You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. So keep going. Keep doing. Keep doing good. Don't try to stand on your own. Stand in Him. Stand in Him. Hallelujah. Stand with your brethren. Let them gird up around you. Let them help you. Let them help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Come on. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God.